the Rules Committee to order, and I will note that we do have a quorum. Uh, first order of business is approval of the minutes. Vice Chair Hollins, would you care to move the minutes? Uh, so moved, Mr. Chair. Vice Chair Hollins moves approval of the minutes from Thursday, January 19th, 2023. Any discussion to the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are adopted. Uh, next up, we have the calendar for the day for Thursday, January 26th. We will be calendaring House File 7 and House File 35. So I will go ahead and move the adoption of the calendar for the day pursuant to Rule 1.21 and 3.33, uh, which would designate January 26, 2023 for the adoption of the calendar for the day and establish a pre-filing requirement for amendments offered to those bills. Any discussion to the calendar for the day? Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate that you kind of are in a dual role this morning, both the author of the bill and the chair of the committee. Um, as you got your wish, Representative O'Neill. <laughs> Pardon me? You got your wish for the morning. <laughs> yes, Mr. Mr. Chair, I sure do. Um, as expressed on the House floor yesterday with three motions to move this to committees that should properly hear this bill, I also express uh, great concern. And my biggest concern that was not even expressed yesterday on the House floor is the fact that you are literally closing down a facility that is a waste to energy facility in Hennepin County, and it did not even go through the committees of that jurisdiction. When we were in uh, Energy Committee, Energy Climate Committee, Mr. Chair, I expressed it there, and I said that's not even in the jurisdiction of this committee and yet it only had one committee stop. And I, I would like to strongly object to moving this to the calendar of the day. It is not ready, it has not gone through the proper committees. Um, and that's a real thing, this is not a political thing, this is a real thing. And I really hope you take us seriously. This is not ready, it needs to go through additional committee stops. Unless you are planning on removing that section uh, from the bill, uh, I would have less concern, but short of that, it is of great concern and I'm, you know, Mr. S Mr. Chair, I do not just make up a bunch of stuff. I'm not a political person. I'm a policy person, and this is not ready. It should not be on the floor. I thank you, Representative O'Neill. Your, your objections are noted. The, uh, we, the bill only deals with the energy portions of waste to energy. It doesn't deal with the waste issues, so a referral to the Environment Committee wasn't necessary. <coughs> it does not close down uh, the facility in Hennepin County that you were mentioning. It only would uh, prohibit it from selling renewable energy credits. That's the only effect it would have. Um, so the, the bill will be uh, not having additional committee stops. Uh, any other discussion to the bill, to the uh, calendar, proposed calendar for the day? Mr. Chair. Representative O'Neill. I'm still not satisfied with that answer because you are talking about changing the basic structure of their financials of this waste to energy. And uh, when I asked you in committee what you're going to do with one million tons of mixed municipal waste, because that would be their recourse is to, is to close themselves down because of the, uh, the financial burden upon them. Again, that was not even discussed in committee because it wasn't our jurisdiction. But I still have grave concerns, even though it's just that portion of it, it's still the net effect of it is that they would close down. And, and you even said it yourself in your commentary to me in that committee, Mr. Chair, you had said that, that this was a compromise with the community that has been affected by the pollution. Um, and so I took that to meaning that the pollution would end, which means the facility would end, and that um, what, literally one million tons of mis mixed municipal waste would have to go somewhere. And I asked you where would it go, and your answer was we would recycle more and compost. And that is absolutely insufficient. I know for a fact that that is not even possible. So, Mr. Chair, I implore you, please, this bill is not ready. I am not saying this as a political concern. This is a real policy concern. It really needs to go through the committees of its, of its honest and true jurisdiction, Mr. Chair. Well, Representative O'Neill, this sounds like a, a great discussion to have on the floor uh, for policy disagreements on the bill. Further discussion to the calendar for the day. Mr. Chair, I have another question. Representative O'Neill. Mr. <coughs> Chair, um, I am not alone in my concerns with the speed at which, and so you said, well, we're gonna deal with these jurisdictional issues on the floor as we debate the bill. That is not the proper place. You know that the proper place is in committee when you have your issue area experts and you can have experts to come and testify. 
this is not how we should be doing law. I recognize the fact that there is a trifecta. I recognize the fact that you can do whatever you want as you're in the majority. I am imploring you, please take a little bit more consideration on these bills, on these very big, very controversial, not ready for prime time bills. And I appreciate the fact that you have worked on this bill. I appreciate the fact that you have uh, made some compromises, but it simply is not enough. And the concerns are vast and great. <clears throat> Uh, we had multiple people from the um, energy production sector out there that provide electricity to one-third of Minnesota families who said they cannot comply with this. So although XL Energy seems to be on board and the other two are either neutral or opposed as far as our IOUs, the uh, co-ops cannot comply with this. And I had asked you what you're going to do to help mitigate that concern, and I didn't get an answer. This, Mr. Chair, this bill is not ready for the floor. This needs to be discussed in committee. There needs to be more work on the bill. If this is just a political um, signaling to some of your base, this is not the way to do it. If you want to have conversations about it, but. We need to take this process much more seriously than we are. We are moving so fast on so many bills. Literally people that have been here 30 to 40 years are saying, what is happening at the Minnesota House of Representatives? You are moving at breakneck speed, and this is just a prime example of that. This is not ready. I'm, again, imploring you, please take this off the calendar for the day. We are going to oppose it strongly. Please, I'm begging you, this is not ready. This is not. This is not fun and games. This is people's lives. This is blackouts. This is rolling brownouts and blackouts and extremely high energy costs. This is very serious. And we have to take this seriously as it is. If this is just a political tip of the hat to somebody, let it be that. But don't make this mandates on the energy providers, energy producers that cannot comply with it. Um, I cannot oppose this more strongly than I am, Mr. Chair. This is absolutely not ready to be calendared. Representative Howard. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, just a question. Um, I'm trying to remember the timing in, in previous years <clears throat> with this proposal. Uh, how many times has this bill been before the Minnesota House in, in previous sessions? Uh, thank you, Representative Howard. We've passed the bill twice uh, through the House, and both times it's only had the same committee stop, which was the Energy Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And just a quick comment, not specifically to this bill, but just to Representative Neal's comments about the speed we're traveling and what we're hearing from Minnesotans. What I'm hearing from Minnesotans is a, um, a desire for our legislature to be productive, to meet their needs, to be uh, urgently addressing challenges that we've faced for years that have been roadblocked. Minnesotans are happy that we're taking action. They expect us to walk and chew gum at the same time and focus on the urgent issues facing Minnesotans. And so um, from what I'm hearing from my constituents, uh, it, they're saying go forth. And this bill in particular is one that is ready for prime time, that is past due, and we're ready to take action. And I look forward to the, the floor discussion uh, this week. Thank you, Representative Howard. Mr. Chair. Uh, <laughs> uh, Leader Damon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And to Representative Howard, I appreciate the question, you know, has this been before the legislature? This is a new legislature um, this year. And so even if it has been heard in the past, I think we need to take a fresh look at it. I agree with my colleagues that this is not ready um, to be heard on the floor. There are still committee stops, as you heard on the floor yesterday afternoon. There are committee stops that this should be in. If people are wanting this, that's great, but let's make sure it's the right thing. There are enough concerns that are raised with potential blackouts and high energy costs. When we are facing the inflation that we are right now, um, there are definite concerns that are raised. Not that we can't take it up, but let's make sure that it is completely ready. But I want to make sure that we are not referencing back to how many times a bill might have been heard years past in past legislative sessions. We have to look at everything with fresh eyes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Nash. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I was going to say the very same thing that Leader Damoth did. It doesn't matter what happened in a previous legislature, and Representative Howard knows that, and that was just a deflection. Um, we're in this legislature. We convened, as you all remember when you raised your hand and swore into a new legislature. has no bearing on what happened in the past. And, you know, it just seems to me that this is very much in line with the rules that we talked about for debate and testimony in committees that 
uh, in almost every committee, the rules say that testimony will be allowed if time permits, which means at the speed that you're going, no, no testimony, and perhaps it's because the testimony that would come against this is an inconvenient testimony that you don't want to hear. But to Representative Howard, who says that we are expected to chew gum and walk at the same time, be careful that you don't stumble and choke on your gum while you're moving so fast. Representative Olson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And just a clarifying point, um, have the chairs of any of the other committees requested seeing this bill? Have they reviewed the bill and know that it should just go through energy? I just, from a process standpoint, we can believe a bill should be heard somewhere, but we actually have a process standpoint, and I wonder if you could just comment on that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Olson. They have reviewed it. They have not requested to hear it. Uh, Leader Damoth. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And just to make note um, for the committee and um, for those that might be watching this morning, um, our leads all did on the House floor ask that this would be reconsidered yesterday. So I understand to Representative Olson's point um, that the chairs have been contacted, but each lead stood up yesterday from our side in the committees that would have liked to have heard this bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Leader Damoth. So I'll renew my motion uh, to adopt the calendar of the day pursuant to Rule 1.21 and uh, 3.33. Mr. Chair, I ask for roll call. Okay, a roll call uh, being requested. There will be a roll call on the calendar for today, and the clerk will take the roll. Chair Long? Aye. Vice Chair Hollins? Aye. Lead Damoth? No. Representative Engen? No. Representative Howard? Aye. Representative Hewitt? Aye. Representative Jordan? Aye. Representative Lilly? Aye. Representative Moeller is excused. Representative Nash? No. Representative Olson? Aye. Representative O'Neill? No. Representative Pulowski? Aye. Representative Robbins? No. Representative Torkelson? No. Representative Wolgamott? Aye. Nine ayes, six nays. There being nine ayes and six nays, the calendar for the day is adopted. Mr. Chairman, may I say something quickly? Representative O'Neill, we're moving on to the permanent rules of the House. If it's on the permanent rules, you may speak to that. But we're uh, going to be working on the um, permit rules before us, and that is our next order of business. The, um, we have uh, a few amendments that are uh, in order, but if you wanted to speak to the permit rules before we get to the amendments, I'll certainly allow it. Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, um, when we look at the totality of the rules changes, it literally allows this body to move even faster even faster, and I really take offense to the comment that we are expected to chew gum and walk at the same time. I've been here 10 years, and I am a respected member of this body. I'm not a political, I am hack, I am a policy person. And normally what I say is actually not just taken with a grain of salt, it's actually weighed heavily and considered. And to say that I or my colleagues or anybody here can't walk and chew gum at the same time is insulting. I certainly think that I can do both and have done both for 10 years. And I really wish that, uh, at least in this committee, that what I said actually has some weight. And I, I really am getting a little bit concerned that our concerns are not being weighed. And when we go into this discussion about the rules, it is literally increasing the speed that we are already at breakneck speed people that have been around this place for over 30 years have seen legislatures come and go have seen legislators come and go are astonished at the speed at which we are moving and yet this set of rules right here will be causing us to go even faster so we can clear the deck for more and more and more and more we have almost three times as many bills introduced, just as one example, as we did two years ago at this exact point in time. We, the amount of calendar bills, the amount of bills that we processed on the floor is literally, it's probably historic. I have to look at the numbers, but, and yet this, these set of rules will literally cause us to go yet even faster. Thank you, so Representative So I am incredibly uh, so concerned with this entire proceeding this morning, Mr. Thank you, Chair. Representative O'Neill. Uh, Mr. McCormick, if you could walk through the rules and then we'll go to the amendments. Uh, members, Mr. Chair, I'm working off the document in your folder, H. Perm Rules 2023. 
on page two of this, we have the first change, which is the addition of the consent calendar to the order of business. The actual consent calendar is on, found on page five. This reestablishes a consent calendar, which was removed from uh, procedures about 10 years ago. The change to this consent calendar is that it envisions a slightly different process than we used to have in the old days. The uh, under paragraph A, a committee or division can determine that a bill that they're passing to the general register is not controversial, and they can recommend <coughs> that the bill be placed on the consent calendar. Under paragraph B, this committee, the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration, will determine that a bill is not controversial and will actually place the bill on the consent calendar. That's a, a different process than in the past. And finally, um, a bill on the consent calendar may not be amended. Um, if before it's third reading, 10 members on the floor object, then the bill must be stricken from the consent calendar and returned to the general register. The uh, next change as we move through is on page nine. Under rule 3.01, we've added a provision that says if an amendment has been withdrawn by the chief author, it may not be offered by another member. Moving forward through the draft, our next change comes under on pages 14 and 15. Thir uh, 14 and 15, we have the removal of the past omnibus bill structure and the creation of the new omnibus bill structure dovetailing with the new committee um, list. Moving forward again, um, the next change here is on page 19, 20, and these are the removal of the past committees all the way through 21 and the establishment of the new committees. Moving forward again, we are next coming to page 26. Actually, um, we have two changes under committee processes. Under committee reports um, on page 26, line 24, um, committee reports may be signed by a chair electronically. And on page 26, line 21, conference committee reports may be approved by conferees from the House electronically. The last, there are two more sets of changes actually. The next change is, um, was added in the last time we reviewed these rules a couple weeks ago, and that's on the bottom of page 28. This adjusts when members who are leaving their offices have to leave and sets a standard date of December 1st. And finally, on pages 30 and 31, on page 30, on line 29, we remove the remote operations rule that was in effect, 10.01, which is sunset. And on page 31, we establish a remote house operations rule. Um, that rule allows the house to operate floor and committee procedures by means of distance voting, remote electronic voting, or voting by other means in urgent or pressing situations. Um, paragraph B says a, a member may attend and vote during both floor or committee meetings via remote means if practicable and only for reasons related to the health or safety of the member or the member's family and with advanced permission by the Speaker of the House of Representatives. And paragraph C allows witnesses to participate in remote in committee hearings via remote means as far as is practicable. And paragraph D allows an entirely remote hearing or floor session but only with approval of the Speaker of the House of Representatives. So we have uh, three amendments that have been filed for the bill, and the first is the A6. Leader Namath, would you care to move the A6? Uh, so moved, Mr. Chair. And so the um, A6 would uh, be a change to specify that the minority lead would also be involved in recommending placement on the consent calendar. Peter Dame, with any comments you wanted to make? Um, that is my amendment. Um, as noted on page five, that would uh, just request or require that the chair and the minority lead would be the ones to recommend placement on the consent calendar in the committee report. 
uh, and I, I'll be um, supporting the amendment. I think this was a, a good request. This was how I think we'd envisioned it working in practice, and it's good to put it in writing. Any discussion to the A6? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The A6 is adopted. Uh, next will be the uh, A7, which uh, I will be offering. And so the A7 on page five, line 11. Uh, so I'll move the A7. Uh, and then on uh, page five, line 11, this would uh, change the 10 members uh, to five members. Uh, I will note that 10 members has been the uh, historical precedent for the House when the consent calendar has been in effect in the past. Um, but uh, Leader Damoth had noted some concern on her side uh, with 10 members, so this is an attempt to try to reduce the threshold um, and make it uh, even easier uh, to remove a bill from the consent calendar. Um, I'll note that I've also given my commitment that in Rules Committee, if there is any objection from, from Leader Damoth to putting a bill on the consent calendar, that it will not be put on the consent calendar, so I'll note that uh, for the record as well. Uh, Leader Damoth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And as we um, had conversation, I appreciate the movement that was made to move that uh, from 10 hands down to five on the floor to be able to pull something. I just want to make note, though, um, if a bill potentially was heard in a committee and we had a member that was not in that particular committee or committees, and if they do not sit on rules, uh, the ability to offer an amendment would not have necessarily been brought to their attention. So by having one hand on the floor to remove something from the consent calendar would be preference. I appreciate your movement. We will not be supporting this today, but I do appreciate the movement down to five. Uh, thank you, Leader Damoth, and, and we did have this discussion. Um, in our view, I think having Having uh, one hand would, would defeat the purpose of the consent calendar because I think it would make it so that there's um, an inability to move what would otherwise be a non-controversial non uh, bill. The checks on this are that it has to be agreed by the minority lead. I've given you my commitment that I won't move anything through a rules committee that um, has your objection. And then there would be a, a five-member threshold as well on this. So. The consent calendar really is intended to be for these non-controversial bills that are bipartisan in nature. Um, and I appreciate the, the um, r desire to have uh, some assurance here, so that's the intent here to try to move from 10 to 5. Uh, any further discussion to the A7? Mr. Chair. Uh, Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So th this is what I was referring to before we started the conversation. Uh, in my view, and maybe it's only my view, but this certainly seems like a way that we can push more bills faster. And um, while there have been a handful of non-controversial bills, bipartisan bills, it certainly seems like that's not what we're doing, at least the first three, four weeks of session. So to me, this just looks like yet another push to push as much as fast at breakneck speed as we possibly can and uh, I also will be voting no on this. I, I think all of us will be. Um, I also find it concerning that the, the unwillingness to go to one hand, and I, we don't talk about the other body, but the way they do consent, the consent calendar is if one person objects because they have a respect for their members in the other body that if one member asks for something, it's granted. And so I would hope that if we're gonna be moving in this direction at the speed that we're moving, um, again, it's got to be historic speed. It absolutely has to be. I don't know how it's anything but absolute uh, breakneck speed. So this is yet another example of trying to clear the deck to get the bills that we may um, not speak too much as get it through the whole process as quickly as possible, get it off the floor and get to the other stuff. So that is my objection to this and this is exactly why I objected before we had this conversation. Representative Nash. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll harken back to when I was mayor in the city of Waconia. We would have a consent agenda that we would put before the council. And the way we structured it was that if one council member had an objection because they may know something that the other group didn't, that they could remove that. And I'll just posit this to you, that let's say something is happening in a bill that impacts only my district. You've now removed my ability to have that potentially removed from the consent agenda. Um, I am one hand on the floor. 
but if something is particularly bothersome for my district and my district alone, you've now stifled those 40 some odd thousand voices. I think it's a bad idea, Mr. Chair, and if we are here to, as it says over the, the top of our rostrum, uh, to be the, the voice of the people is the voice of God, um, this takes away potentially 40,000 voices in that instance that I just gave you. I'll be voting no. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Nash. It certainly wouldn't take away your voice. There's no limit on debate, uh, but if you can't persuade four additional colleagues that you should pull a bill off the consent calendar, then you won't have very much luck on the amendment. Uh, so this wouldn't limit debate. As I mentioned, the goal here is to try to have focus on uh, non-controversial bills. Uh, one request that we've also heard from the minority is to be able to have more votes on standalone bills, and uh, this would allow us to move non-controversial bills as standalones and not as omnibus bills at the end of session. So I think that will be something that the minority would also appreciate. Uh, Seeing no further discussion to the A7, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. no. The A7 is adopted. Uh, and our final amendment is the A18. Uh, Leader Damuth, would you care to move the A18 and describe the amendment? Uh, so move, Mr. Chair. Uh, the A18 um, is uh, makes changes on page 27, line 27. The conference committee report may only be signed electronically if the conference committee has met consistent with joint rules 2.0. Six at least once. Our concern in bringing this amendment forward is that uh, to make sure that the conference committees have actually met, that the public, if possible, has had an opportunity to weigh in on that, and that it wouldn't just be done in passing, but it would actually be an official meeting. And that is my amendment, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Leader Damuth. Uh, Mr. McCormick, could you uh, make some a, comments to the amendment? Mr. Chair, remember, it's just a technical. It's Joint Rule 2.06, so that's a typo. So we can just incorporate that. So we'll uh, make an oral amendment to have it be 2.06. Mm -hmm. All right. All those in favor of the oral amendment? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, 2.06. Uh, so I'll note that um, this uh, was a reasonable request, and uh, the intent of having electronic signature was certainly not to get around a committee meeting. It was to have flexibility if um, committee reports are getting prepared sometimes very late at night to not have uh, members need to, to stick around. Um, so happy to support this amendment. Any further discussion on the A18? All right, seeing uh, none, all those in favor of the A18 as amended, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Uh, the A18 is adopted. Okay, that is uh, all of our amendments. Is there any discussion to the permanent rules before we vote on them? <coughs> All right, seeing none, then I move the, oh, pardon, Representative Robin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, members. I just have to say that I, I still do have concerns about the permanent rules, um, the electronic signatures, and the uh, uh, permission for remote voting. Um, as I have said before, and you'll hear it again many times, the Constitution says that we are to meet at the seat of government. And I think that means we are here in person, and the system we had pre-COVID where members got excused for illness worked very well. The public understands when we are ill or when, you know, a family member is ill, but I think if someone um, is is ill or in surgery or having a, a severe crisis in their family, they're probably um, needing to focus on that and voting remotely would better be done excused rather be excused rather than try to pay attention and vote and wonder what amendment you're on. I just think it does not serve the interests of the institution well to allow that. I think we should go back to the just excused if you have an emergency. The public fully understands that we all have families and lives and um, I think this is unconstitutional. So I strenuously object and will continue to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Robbins. Leader Damon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as Representative Robbins has brought out some of the concerns that our side does have on the, the rules, um, we do look forward to the, um, the debate on Thursday on the floor as we do bring those forward. Um, I think the concern specifically over the remote piece is of grave concern. Um, as has already been stated, but we do look forward to that debate. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Leader Damon. Um, 
Seeing no further discussion to the permanent rules, I will move that the permanent house rules as amended be recommended to the House of Representatives for debate for Thursday, January 26th, with a pre-filing requirement for amendments of 12 noon and 6 p.m. on Wednesday, January 25th. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. The permanent rules are uh, recommended for debate and moved to the floor. Uh, there is no further business before the committee, and so we are adjourned. Thank you.